Hello and welcome back to the channel, I'm Scratchy, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of building and showing off builds and even a little bit of theory crafting kind of sprinkled in here um, for all of the jungle rolls. So again, shout out, or uh, not again, shout out, but shout out to Soul Reaper who actually did one of these videos. I'm probably going to link it in the description for mid lane characters, and I think that this was a really good idea. I like the way that he did it. We're going to be using Ometa City because I actually think that the interface for this is pretty nice, and we're going to dive into a build for the junglers. Now I'm going to give a couple of builds because some of these characters can play multiple builds unlike most of the mids you kind of have like a set path that you run um so this might be a little bit long but i'll chop it up for y'all and i'll do my best to make it um nice so let's go ahead and dive into it so let's go ahead and start with countess who i do think still can be classified as a jungle i don't think she's actually the worst thing in the world um definitely not the worst jungler in the world but let's go ahead and talk about it so for countess um I think you definitely want to start with the Occult Crest, and in my personal opinion, I think Obelisk is just the best. Uh, you're going to want to build Obelisk. It's kind of how you get more and more into Countess Burst, and the uh, Occult Crest actually gives her a little bit of sustain in the early game for actually jungling. Now, for her itemization, um, it's, it's a little bit unclear to me how exactly i like to build her um i do think that there is actually something soul reaper said in his video about mid laners that i kind of resonate with a little bit for countess and it's like if on your first back you can reach for uh let me see if i can go magic power uh, abilities here if you can reach for the first uh component of the megacosm the 1200 staff thing i forget potent staff then you can go straight into megacosm if you can't reach for this <laughs> then i think that you want to go into something like combustion um it just seems like that's like a, it's a fair build path that's going to give you some power and even though i don't think combustion is the best item to build it's like it, it's about the build curve right it's about actually needing to like if you go back to base and you can't buy anything well then it's just a wasted base so i would recommend that you go megacosm first item if you can't go megacosm first First item then i think actually building something like combustion is not really that terrible now the beauty of countess is that she is just a full-on burst mage you don't really want to build anything other than that so i think um th this is a hero that i haven't actually jungled a ton of so forgive me if i don't build her the best um and actually if you go watch soul reaper's video watching whatever he builds is probably better than me um but for the sake of throwing her in the jungle list as well i think something like uh, Megacosm, um, Caustica, or the um, Wraith Leggings, Caustica, going into these big damage items are going to be really, really important for her. And then you can even kind of counter build a little bit with something like Golem's Gift that comes with some pretty good haste. And then I would always try to finish with an Oblivion Crown. So I think the item on here that I'm maybe not the most comfortable with might even be the Golem's Gift, although I do think this is a pretty good item. Um, this is about what I would run on her. Uh, I think this is a pretty solid build. It's going to give you really good burst and pen, which is going to help a lot lot with her just like burstiness and her uh, the nature of her kit and um yeah that's about how i would build her again not going to spend too much time on this one because i don't actually think she's the most important jungler in the game uh, but this is about how i would build countess for jungle so there you have it all right moving on let's go ahead and, and talk about crunch now crunch the beauty of crunch is that he's actually kind of like a pretty good um like jungler and you can build him with like multiple build paths but there's a pretty tried and true way of doing it that i think i'm most comfortable with now the beauty of the rogue crest is that you get witch stalker which is just like a better cleanse for crunch specifically because it's going to bring you ability haste and that's the thing that crunch wants is ability haste so you're going to always want to go the assassin crest i forget what it's called uh, but you're going to go witch stalker this pretty much this kind of came out a little bit late i was actually using brutal axe and then realized that this option is just really really good because you can get some ability haste out of it now, Icecorn Talons isn't terrible. I actually think Icecorn Talons is okay. So if you want to go with a little bit more of a bruisery option, Icecorn Talons is good for Ability Haste. So if you're going the Bruiser Crest and you don't need, like, if you want to go the Bruiser Crest and you don't want um, a cleanse, then Icecorn Talons is really great. If you do want a cleanse, then I suggest going the Witch Stalker on the Assassin Crest. So, yeah. Now, first item for Crunch, I'm still really, really keen on using the Mutilator. I think the Mutilator is a phenomenal item. It gives uh, percentage AP damage, a little bit of sustain, some good, um, like, actual physical damage, and then um, the Ability Haste. Now, here is where you have like a nice important moment. I feel like if your game is going well and you can continue to like snowball the game and take over, then you go into augmentation. Augmentation, a phenomenal crunch item. This is like basically just a crunch item. Really, really great. 
damage, power spike, HP, and good haste on it. And then from here, this is kind of where I'd start tapering off and just go going tanky. Um, I, I definitely think that you can go a few different directions. That's the, be the, beauty, the beauty of bruisers and fighters in this game. There's lots of different directions you can go with the build. But at this point, I'm not going to lie, I'm just kind of going to like standard tank items, and I would go something like Tainted Guard into Tainted Bastion. Uh, if you feel like you need more magic armor than that, if, if it's kind of a game, and it's going to be a, a similar theme you're going to see here, and instead of the Bastion or after the Bastion, you could go into something like Crystal and Curious, because Crystal and Curious has a ton of magic armor on it, uh, but I do like the double Tainted um, build, because you can kind of like double stack Blighted, and then you can get the Tainted Bastion to have 12% uh, mitigation instead of 6% pretty much all the time. So this is like a really good kind of like tanky HP setup for yourself. And then last item, and, and I'm honestly probably going to do this for a lot of, of these characters in here. The last item is really up to you. I don't really want to lock in a fifth item for y'all. I can give you some options, but if I lock it in, then you're going to feel inclined to build it. And honestly, it's really game state dependent. So, um, you know, if you, if you were having trouble with like, um, you know, uh, carries, right. Then you could go into warden's faith. If you want to build, um, like more healing for yourself. You could build uh, a Draconum, which I can't find. Like this could be, uh, bring you some more healing. If you need more sustain, you know, there's there's all kinds of different items in here. If you want, um, you know, more magic armor and a, a potential like, you know, anti-blow, get blown up CC, then you can go Legacy. So there's a lot of options that you can build. Um, and I do think that there's a lot of <laughs> like viable options. Um, so I'm trying to think. There's another item that I like on Crunch. Uh, specifically, but it's it's like slipping my mind. But yeah, some really, really solid options. Any of the tank items are, are honestly great for fifth slot. Dude, there's a crunch item that's absolutely slipping in my mind. It's going to drive me crazy. If you can think of it and you know I'm missing it, then let me know in the comments down below. Um, but yeah, really, really solid uh, potential for... Um, yeah, for crunch. So really solid four slot build that you can build. Uh, if you don't really, if you feel like you're like the main front line, you might want to skip the augmentation and go say mutilator directly into tank items and really just start building full tank. You can even build tank with crunch with a, uh, like a, a Razorback and a Titan's Crest too. So it really just depends, but this is like a pretty standard, like bruiser into tanky build, uh, that you can run on crunch. All right, next we're going to have the Fang Mao. Fang Mao, um, it's pretty much always the Assassin's Crest, and you either want to use Nex, which I really prefer, but if they have a Richter, they have a ton of CC, they got a Fey, you might want to go Witch Stalker. So for the sake of the build here, I'm going to just go ahead and show Nex, uh, but you know, keep in mind Witch Stalker, a really, really good option uh, for you to potentially pick up. Now, with Assassin's, Malady first item is going to be Core. It's super, super strong, and I definitely don't think that you want to miss it, and then you want to go into... Uh, pain weaver or dread if you're feeling like you're getting a lot of magic influence in your game you can go ahead and rush a dread second uh, but i think pain weaver second item is really really good for fang mal and then right after that if you haven't already i would definitely pick up the dread um dread is a phenomenal assassin item this item is really really strong basically when you kill stuff you sustain yourself right so this is really good for his old resets it's really good for um you know split pushing a wave and sustaining yourself off a wave sustaining yourself in the jungle it's really really strong and then this for assassin it's even more so where I, I'm going to leave the last two items up to you because it really just depends. If you're getting blown up, you can build a tank item here. Um, you know, you could build an unbroken will or, you know, th there's so many potential options that you can build for slots four and five. And I'm really going to kind of leave it up to you. Uh, like I said, if you feel like you're getting blown up, build a Warden's Faith. If you feel like uh, you want more pen and you want to do more damage, uh, you know, look into like an omen or... Um, let me think, what other assassin items do I even like? Um, I, I, I don't know if I like Demon Edge on him. I haven't really built that on him. Uh, you can build anti, you know, CC with the Cleanse with Legacy. It's going to bring you a new pen, but, you know, it's going to bring you some stats and some ability haste. So there, there's definitely options for Fang Mao. I even think something like Tectonic Mallet, just to make yourself really, really fast, is not a bad option on Fang Mao, um, because he's just like a speedy character, bro. So even bringing yourself some Tectonic Mallet is not a terrible option. And, uh... Yeah, so just my thoughts with Fang Mao. Um, oh, another one. If you need more magic armor, uh, then you can go with the Mesmer. Mesmer is not a bad item at all. Uh, you can kind of build that for yourself and, uh, yeah, go from there. So that's Fang Mao. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next hero. For Grux Jungle, um, this one's going to be where I have kind of a split builds. You can essentially either go tank Grux or you can go um, like a more damage bruiser focused Grux. And it really just depends on how you actually want to build it. Um, for the sake of saying, I think I'm going to lean more toward 
um, like Brutal Axe and Ice Corn Talons Grux, of which it really just kind of depends on you. If you feel like you need a cleanse, I think Brutal Axe is great. Um, and then Ice Corn Talons is also great as well. I'm not going to lie. I've actually even messed around with Liberator. I don't hate it because Liberator comes with attack speed, and that's something that Grux really, really likes. And it comes with lifesteal. So you get a little bit less sustain in the form of having health. Like you don't just have like the 200 health, but you actually get a little bit of lifesteal, uh, which is pretty nice. And then it brings you attack speed. So it's kind of like if you want to cleanse, I would consider between Brutal Axe and Liberator, and the, the trade-off here is that you're, you're either looking at 200 health or you're looking at some attack speed. Grux loves attack speed, especially if you're doing a damage focus build, so I would consider it, but um, the crest options for Grux for a damage build are a little bit open. You know, you got Ice Corn Talons, you got Liberator, you got Brutal Axe, and that's something to consider. Um, with Grux as a damage build, I'm actually still very much so riding the Sky Splitter wave. I think rushing a Sky Splitter on Grux feels pretty damn strong. Like, you, you get a lot of shred, you can kind of get in there and just instantly start swinging away and then this is where I would start to build the foundation of like a bruiser build something like bone saw on grux is actually really really solid this is just a great fighter item in general it's got low power but it's got a nice attack speed stem and then you have that huge health dude 600 health is massive so this is kind of like building the foundation of like hey i'm really really like shredding and doing like you know squishy damage and this is like okay i'm building a foundation for more uh armor or like healthy and tankiness and then from there you can kind of same thing that i like to say uh with a lot of these builds you really just start building whatever you need um so i do think something again you can go double tainted um build yourself uh, kind of some defenses here um if you want magic armor item but you still want to be on the offensive side you could skip out on the bastion and you can actually go uh, an item that i rather like let me see if i can find it in here for grux absolution i'm not entirely sold on this item because it did get a little bit nerfed uh, but i do think it's still good it's like damage mitigation so this could be a full build or you could skip the tainted bastion and maybe come back to it uh, later and leave it as a fifth slot um, so you could do something like this where you have that's gonna bother me uh, so you have the absolution as your armor item so you're building like an attack speed focused build right like i said you could even do um not pacifier liberator something like this where it's like this is just a lot like we're really building on the attack speed but at the same time you're stacking some health you're stacking some armor you're stacking a little bit of defenses you have defense here it's not a ton but you do have some magic armor here and then your fifth slot item can be like hey what is the game state how do i need to build myself uh do i want to go ahead and slam the additional mitigation because now you have like uh double tainted with some mitigations and you just kind of feel it out so this is like a pretty decent uh bruiser build for Grux. I also do think that uh, Basilisk is a really, really good item for Grux as well. Um, I, last I heard, it might be bugged on Grux. <laughs> I don't really keep up with bugs too much. I should probably pay a little bit more attention to that, um, but I haven't messed with it too much. I do think this is a good option. Um, someone who plays Grux probably more or even better than me is probably going to think I'm crazy for not including this in like a damage focus build, um, but keep that in mind. I do think that this item is really good. Um, I'm, you know, you don't have to build the Sky Splitter. I think it, it builds <laughs> really great shred. And you can just kind of get in a fight and go crazy with it. Um, gives you objective shred presence too, which I like, um, but not necessarily a necessity. All right, now let's talk about um, Tanky Grux. Razorback is always, of course, really, really good. And then for something like Tanky Grux, it, it's the, the build path is terrible for a first starting item, but I, I don't think that bruisers as tanks should always be like 100% tank. It just feels a little weird to me. Um, so I literally just had it. Where is... Dude, this is going to drive me crazy. Where's Bonesaw? Here's Bonesaw. So you could do um, straight into Bonesaw. Again, the build path for it kind of sucks, um, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, you can build the foundation for building a little bit of damage and bringing you some of that attack speed, and then this is when you start going uh, full tank. So again, it's the same kind of thing. You want to you know build a foundation for a little bit of bruisery um, damage, and then you start going full tank for tank Grux. This is if you're literally tanking Grux. And then the rest of your build, again, it's the same thing. It's like, what do you need? Are they really heavy CC and you need more magic armor? Uh, go on Broken Will. If they're, um, you know, double mages or like, you know, Shinbi Countess or something, Crystalline Cures, this is just a phenomenal magic armor item, dude. It's really, really good. Um, if you need, uh, if you want to be still on the uh, slightly offensive side, so it's almost like tanky bruiser grux, you got legacy potential. Uh, Raymond's a pretty decent item. I don't think it's great for tank grux uh, specifically, but it's a pretty damn good item. Um, uh, Dynamo, if you want to bring damage to your tanky build, because grux does a lot of CC, I think Dynamo is a pretty decent uh, option. And, and here's the thing if you did want to go full tank grux, you can do a rampage build that we're going to hit where you go like brimstone into double tainted, finish the fire blossom 
that's totally possible. You can really send on the full tank Grux, uh, but your auto attacks are going to be a little weak. So I do like to bring like maybe a bone sauce. So consider that first item brimstone um, or fire blossom into double tainted. And then uh, what do I want to see? I mean, um, you know, flux matrix is going to, if you have some magic dealers on your team, flux matrix is good because it's going to bring you, um, you know, more magic damage to your team or for your team. Um, obviously going into warden's faith as a, as a tank item is always good against carries. Um, so that's phenomenal. Trying to think of what how i would truly wrap up this build here it really just depends like that's why doing a video like this for say mid laners versus doing it for junglers is it's like so much more different because uh damage characters you kind of know what kind of damage you want to do and you want to build into that the majority of your games um whereas uh yeah you don't really necessarily uh need to do that for um tanks and bruisers it's kind of game state dependent oh i also forgot to mention um instead of tainted guard on a damage build for grux draconum is really really good it increases his uh attack speed if he gets the kill and you can kind of go crazy and then heal yourself and it's, it's just a really good fighter-y kind of item so um it's kind of where i'm going to leave the grux discussion like i said you really just start looking at some of the meta tank items whenever you hit these four and five slots when you're doing a tank build and that's kind of the direction that you want to go with it all right so kalari we're going to hit a pretty similar sentiment uh, i most always want to build next but you might have to build with stalker um sometime and you want to go um malady into pain weaver uh actually with i'm not gonna lie i haven't decided if i like second slot pain weaver or second slot vanquisher i feel like if you can get a second slot vanquisher you have the potential to really snowball a game because of the execute so sometimes i'll go malady pain weaver sometimes i'll go malady vanquisher malady vanquisher is more often than not the direction i like to go with it into pain weaver so you have a little bit like of that extra in and out movement speed and from here it's the same thing you can build into a dread i really think infernum for poke damage on kalari is really good so if you if you want to lean into that a little bit more depending on how the team the enemy team comp is set up um infernum is a great item a dread's a great item uh for assassins we talked about uh, mesmer is a great item for assassins um and yeah so so some of the items that i would look to build on kalari uh, like i said i with some of these jungle builds i really feel like i have to leave them hanging off a little bit uh, hopefully that's not too annoying i think i'm a little insecure about doing that if i'm being completely honest uh, but this is a pretty good uh, kalari build that you can build into all right let's go ahead and touch on chimera so with chimera i almost always will build brutal axe for um a like bruisery build this is like double cleanse it just works with him well it honestly is like a really really great uh, option i don't think ice corn talons is the worst thing in the world but i really do like uh, brutal axe and then for a damage focus build i really do just go sky splitter and and it, this is kind of like you're really just going all in and diving so i go sky splitter into raiment into draconum and then from there it's kind of the same thing like if you feel like you're getting blown up by magic armor if you just feel un, like not tanky in general you can go into crystalline curious i think this if you really feel like okay i'm not staying alive in this game you can go crystal on curious or you can even go a little bit more aggressive and go something uh, more aggressive in the sense that you're building a fighter item you can go like uh, legacy or absolution so um this is if you're getting blown up by cc and you need magic armor this is like if you want to have some of that attack speed to play with um and then it has brings damage mitigation so this is like the bruisery build that i would look to build and it's 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 a really weird mix of items but it makes it bruiser if you think about it you have a carry item you have a tank item you have a fighter item so like all those three put together you have like damage like half tanky half damage and then you have tank so it kind of makes like a bruiser build and then uh slots four and five i would say absolution legacy uh maybe crystalline curious and then the last item it's just whatever you need this is like a a bruisery kind of like hp or like a bruisery like shredding build with the sky splitter i also do think there's something to be said about a like hp stacking kind of bruiser build which i haven't messed around with as much but it's something i do like and i need to mess around with a little bit more i think overlord into bone saw has a lot of potential to be really strong where you're just kind of like stacking hp and playing off the overlord um even something like overlord bone saw into uh what's the item i'm looking for uh basilisk this is where you get some like percentage shred and all of these items having increased hp is going to play into your overlord splash damage and you can build a build like this and be like relatively tanky and like have cleanse and be relatively tanky and then um like have some sustain for yourself as well and so this would be like your hp damage focus bruiser build um and then you can carry that into like a couple of tank items like you could literally finish this um with like a double tainted setup if you wanted to 
Um, I think jungle builds are just so much more interpretive now that I'm actually like listing them and sitting down and talking about it. So that's why I'm talking about like this is like a little theory crafty um, instead of me just giving you dumping a bunch of builds on you. Uh, but you could build something like this and this is like an HP like damage focused like a uh, bruisery kind of build. You're not going to shred as hard with this build, but you're going to survive a little bit longer. So I actually think that this build's pretty damn good and I've played it a few times. It doesn't end up being the build that I, is my go-to uh, on Kai, but I actually like it quite a bit. And then last but not least, I think Tank Kai is really good. Now here's the thing with Tank Kai. He is still a fighter. So you're going to go Razor. Um, you're going to go Razor back for the crest. And then I really like uh, Overlord again. I can find it, dude, my brain. My brain when doing a video like this is uh, pretty cringe. Let me niche down, that's what I should have been doing anyways. Uh, Overlord, the reason why Overlord is good on Kai is because when you press Q, you spam all that damage out there and then you go full tank. So it's kind of like Overlord on Rampage is not bad, but it looks, for the same reason it's not bad on uh, Kai, it's the same reason why it's pretty decent. So uh, you can do something like uh, this into Raymond, because Raymond's just a really good item on Kai, and then you could go into uh, Double Tainted. So same thing, kind of building into that mitigation, uh, building up your defenses, being really annoying and tanky, and then fifth slot, just whatever you need, whatever kind of additional armor you need. If you're getting blown up by mages, go crystalline curse uh if you're getting blown up by mages and cc go on broken well if you if you're if the carries are just critting you too hard then you go warden's faith right um but this build actually is just so annoying dude you dive in you turn on your razor back you spam out a bunch of q damage while being incredibly hard to take down so tank kai i actually think is a uh, pretty underrated and pretty strong so yeah all right with rampage i'm gonna keep this one really simple uh you go razor back and you nine times out of ten you go fire blossom or brimstone first item into um double tainted and and this is just like the core you're strong as hell hard to deal with you don't take a lot of damage kind of build here's the interchangeable part of that uh if you want to if you if you want to you can go overlord here instead i think this is fine i prefer just being full tank rampage i think it just works the best um so I would probably prefer this kind of a setup. And then it's the same thing. Your back two items are going to just be uh, whatever you need for that game. Um, so in terms of tanky items, I don't think Raymond's a bad option for um, Rampage. I think it's pretty good. It's just been nerfed, and I, I don't think I like putting it higher up in the build path. So you can put Raymond uh, closer to the back. And um, other phenomenal items for Rampage. If you want to go a little aggressive, I actually think Salvation could be pretty good. You're not going to be able to use the Omni Vamp super well that comes with it, but it brings you a massive health shield. Um, so a massive health shield could be pretty good. And, and Salvation, again, oh, this is actually the item that I was thinking about on Crunch, now that I think about it. Uh, the Omni Vamp is pretty big on Crunch. So uh, if you want to go a pretty aggressive Bruiser build, you can throw in a Salvation. Salvation is one of those items that's really, really good, but it gets a little hard to slot sometimes. Um, so not the best item for the Omni Vamp on the um on the rampage but pretty good on chimera and it's pretty good on rampage just because if you're slamming full tank dude this is going to be a huge health shield whenever it procs and then it does bring you a little bit of damage to scale into your abilities um as well so um yeah fifth slot item you know you can kind of just go with whatever armor set you need and that's good for rampage all right next on the list is going to be richter um for richter it's almost always Razorback. I do think that Tempest is okay for Richter. Uh, if you're going a little bit more aggressive, you could go Obelisk, but I just don't really see the reason for it. So I think Razorback um, is really, really good. I actually think even near War Boots could be good, so that way you could run into a fight, uh, but I haven't messed around with that too much, but uh, mostly Razorback just because it's consistently a tanky crest item that's going to give some good return damage. And this one is pretty standard. I, I don't really change this build up. I go brimstone into double tainted finish the fire blossom on uh you know after you finish these two items and then it's the same thing dude the tank items man it's really up to you if you want to go a little bit more aggressive you can go flux matrix into dynamo this will bring you a little bit extra damage while still being tanky or if you're like really the main tank of the team and this is why the builds are a little bit different for each one you just slam tank items man you just go with what you need right you just slam the tank items dude do what you got to do um and you know slots four and five are really just up to you i think building this solid foundation of a tank build is is pretty set it, it feels pretty good and you can kind of go from there i don't really think there's any um magic items that richter can use super well like i, I mean you can do like an oath keeper right like like sure there's some opportunities if you really want to meme around a little bit but when it comes to being a tank that's your role right and, and for me i don't really deviate outside of my role right like i i want to be a tank so again you could throw this in i don't think this is a terrible uh item for richter bring some nice uh some haste some damage and 
some health. Um, so if you, if you want to lean a little bit bruisery, magic bruiser, Richter, sure, feel free to. Uh, but for me personally, I just slam the tank items in, and that's uh, what I tend to do with it. I'm not going to cover Jungle Severog because I don't really, I'm not really much of a believer. Um, but even still, build a lot of health and tanky items, right? Shouldn't be jungle. With Shouldn't be jungle. I'm really big on Tempest. Um, I don't necessarily think that it's the only crest that you can use. I, I do think that you could maybe try uh, the other <laughs> Magician crest. Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, Magician crest, and 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 work with some of those items. I think there's some potential there. Uh, but the sustain you get from a Colt crest early on in the jungle is really great and then whenever you're diving into a fight you're just gonna do uh, a pretty good amount of healing for yourself and kind of keeping yourself alive brings you some health so i think tempest is probably the best for and you got two builds on Shinbi. Probably the better one right now is Worldbreaker. You build some HP, tenacity, some damage in, in, as a strong foundation, and then you go double tainted into um, whatever you need for the rest of this dude. This Bruiser Shinbi build, it's annoying. It's not even that it does a ton of damage. It's annoying. It's hard for them to deal with you. You're dashing all over the place. You're not easy to kill. You are scaling your damage with Worldbreaker because of your HP, and you're you're tanky with damage mitigation. Um, from here, again, it kind of just leans into that same thing if you need more damage maybe you go into um uh, a life binder right because the thing with the life binder is the life binder is going to scale your hp up for world breaker it's going to bring you some sustain and damage um you know you can go life binder dream binder something like that could be good um you could i, I don't really think oath keeper is super good but you, you can see the theme i'm playing with with hp or you just go more tank items right something like flux matrix is going to scale your hp up but it's also going to make them take more magic damage um so it, it, you know there's really options on where you want to take this build after this three slot um, the only other thing i'll say for shin is I do think there's an opportunity to play her very assassin, but it's dependent on the team comp. Um, and it's it's very, very, um, I, I guess, a little bit more volatile to do something like this, but you can go Megacosm straight into um, a Life Binder into like World Breaker. I think that this is a pretty solid foundation uh, of a build. And actually, I, I, you might even want to build the World Breaker before the Life Binder. I tend to like to get the sustain, so I feel like I have a little bit of sustain. Um, and... And then you can go into like some pen. I, I'm not exactly sure. To be completely honest, I've been playing this build less now, and I'm not exactly sure where I like the um, the itemization to lie on these back three items. But I do like rushing the megacosm into building some of these items. And actually, probably life binder will probably come uh, a little bit later. So um, megacosm into uh, world breaker because world breaker is just a strong ass item into like wraith leggings life binder, and then you could end on. You know, whatever you need. Golem's Gift is a pretty solid aggressive option that still brings some armor. Uh, if you need to anti-heal with Shinbi, I actually think Tainted Scepter is kind of a similar thing. You're going to build some some HP. I think Tainted Scepter is pretty solid on her. Um, so there's definitely like a much more assassin-focused Shinbi build. But this build, I think, is pretty volatile. And you, you got to play the in and out really fast uh, with this one if you want to survive and have some value in uh, your fights. So Bruiser Shinbi, I think, is a little bit more consistent. All right. Last but not least for me, we're going to go ahead and touch on Steel. It's very, very same thing, right? Like tank, tank, foundation, boom, boom, boom. And then you kind of go into what you need here. This is another similar one where if you're, if you, maybe you're not the only frontliner or like a pretty solid frontliner, you can go a little bit aggressive with like Flux Matrix Dynamo, depending on the, you, you build this in the order that you need it. If they're having a magic damage, if you're having magic damage problems, um, you go Flux Matrix first. If you're having armor uh, problems or physical damage problems, you go Dynamo first, or you can go even more tanky than that. It really just depends on what you want to do. You know, go Warden's Faith or go Stonewall or go both. Uh, four and five slot for tank it's just game state dependent it's really hard to teach a uh, build for that in my opinion specifically because it just is very very game state dependent but uh some of these big tank items man you know you just build whatever you need in the back end of the game dependent on um you know how the game state is going so friends that's kind of my every build for the junglers that i played the theory crafting behind it the way that i like to do it um if you have a rival opinion definitely let me know uh, if any like other top tier players are out there that are watching this and you want to like hey man i don't know if you if you're understanding this well hey man challenge my opinion i would definitely appreciate learning more uh from some of y'all i think a big one for me lately if i'm being completely honest raymond this one throws me on some heroes i don't know when i like to build this item because they keep nerfing it and i do think it's just a very strong tank item gives you a lot of sustain and a lot of health um but it, it's kind of fallen a little bit further down for me um 
and yeah it's kind of where i got it so those are my thoughts drop a like on the video subscribe for future predecessor content this one is a lot harder than somebody hopping on here and making a mid video or an 80 carry video because a lot of those build paths are like hey look i'm just going from point a to point b with damage these videos are these kinds of characters a little bit more interpretive on how we need to play it in, in the game state and the full team comp right like you know i can go a little bit more damage heavy if there's two tanks um but when you're a mid, you're pretty much always just doing damage. When you're a carry, you're pretty much just always doing damage. You're never, you're never wondering if there's two carries and maybe you can go bruiser carry, right? That's not really a thing. So, friends, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, um, drop a like on the video. Subscribe for future predecessor content because we're coming out with videos just about every single day. Riding this hype train all the way to the release of this game that I do love. And I definitely would appreciate having you around. As always, be sure to be kind of one another. Tell someone you love them. And I'll see you on the next video.